Good evening folks, it's Steve Cal5JUF. Hope everyone's doing okay out there. Today's video is not really directly related to the FT991A, but I think there's some, some basic concepts here uh, with uh, meters, wavelength, meters per second, speed of light, and so forth, and exactly how they relate to radio. So I, I kind of put this a video together because it's something I struggled with and I wanted to share with everyone at least my struggles and what I think is, is how all this works. All right. So again, we want to review wavelength, frequency, and their relationships, specifically in ham radio. Examples of light, travel, and distance, frequency, and breakdown. Demo of radio waves traveling at the speed of light, velocity factor, and dipole length, and example of some calculations. So what I want to show you here is the speed of light. What exactly is that? That is when you, that's how fast light travels in free space. So for example, the constant speed of light, also known as C, is the speed light travels in free space. The speed is three times 10 to the eighth or 300 million meters per second. The below shows when I turn on a red light and one second later, that light will have traveled 300 million meters per second. And the second example, when you're on the moon, for example, and you're on Earth, the moon is 384 million meters per second. So if you turn on a flashlight, it will take 1.28 seconds. So let me show you the example here. So when I just click on the uh, light here, it travels in one second, 300 million meters in one second. Now the Earth to the moon, now the moon is 384 million meters. It's a little further than, the, than one second, so guess what happens when I turn on the light here? It takes 1.28 seconds for the light to travel from Earth to the moon. So pretty cool concept. One second, that's just a normal 300 million meters. Light travels that distance in one second. So if the moon is 384 million, it's gonna take a little longer. The below shows when the red light turns on uh, traveling 300 million meters per second to Jupiter, for example, it would take 2,596 seconds for the light to be seen on Jupiter. So for example, there's two examples here. This is just, you know, normal 300 million meters. But notice how slow it takes for that light to get to Jupiter. It literally takes 43 minutes. So what you see happening here in one second to get to Jupiter is 778 billion meters. Incredible. So that just kind of shows you light can only go so fast. It can only go 300 million meters per second. It can't go any faster. So that's kind of the concept here. Radio waves also travel at the speed of light. The radio frequency is the number of cycles multiplied by the wavelength and always equals 300 million meters. In the below example, when we say we're talking on 10 meters, that's referring to a frequency, for example, of 28,400,000 hertz or 28.4 megahertz. The hertz stands for, uh, and this also is, represents per second. So when I say 10 meter, the below is what I'm talking about. There's 28,400,000 cycles that are occurring in this distance right here. And each one of those cycles is 10.56 meters. Pretty amazing. 28,400,000 times 10.56 will always equal 300 million meters per second. So when we're talking about uh, wavelength, that's what we're talking about. 28 million. 400,000 cycles and each one of those cycles is 10.56 meters and all of those cycles multiplied by 28.4 or 28,400,000 is equal to 300 million meters per second. Pretty amazing. As we go higher in frequency, the wavelength becomes shorter, and this is something we all know from, from you know, technician classes and so forth. Uh, 
uh, thousand cycles uh, in one in 300 million meters per second the wavelength is going to be shorter so this is two meter there it is right there two meter this is 28 million four hundred thousand which is 10 meter 146 million four hundred forty thousand which is two meter there's two meter right there this is 300 uh, million cycles this is not really a hand band but this is just for illustration purposes and then the last one is when we go to 447 million meters per second, which is UHF. Guess what? Now we're down to 0.67, and we often we often refer to this as a 70 centimeter band. So you can kind of see what's happening here. It's just the number of cycles in the distance of 300 million meters. Same distance, just the cycles get shorter as the frequency gets higher. Cycles get shorter, more shorter, as the frequency gets higher. This 300 million meters per second is a constant as does not change. So that's a critical piece of this whole puzzle. So what happens is, for example, at 148, 146,440,000 cycles per second, what happens here is when you key up the radio, that radio wave this number of cycles goes past this point in one second. So watch. In one second, that entire distance of 300 million meters goes past this one line. Watch again. One second. That's how fast it goes. Here's a more realistic demo. Whoops. <laughs> See how fast that went? So when you say 146,440,000 cycles per second, that's what's happening. It's going past a given point in one second. There's 28,400,000. See, the, the, the constant is this meters per second, 300 million. That's a constant. That doesn't change. What changes is the distance of this wavelength. So that's what's amazing about this. Whoops. There we go. There's 28,400. And lastly, I'll show you real quick. We talk about uh, velocity factor. This is a concept that's kind of strange to me, but I think I figured it out. The below demonstrates how the speed of light, uh, which propagates down the media, for example, a dipole, which is a wire, slows down when introduced uh, to the dipole wire or a coax cable. But in this example, we're specifically talking about a dipole. The radio waves slow down about 5% on a dipole antenna wire, so the physical wire must be cut to match exactly one half wavelength considering a velocity factor of 0.95. So essentially what's happening here is in normal free space, you have 28,400,000 cycles that are occurring in a distance of 300 million meters per second. So when you do the math, 10.56 times 28,400,000 is always going to equal 300 million meters per second. But when you put that RF energy or that RF signal on a dipole wire, it's going to slow down about 5%. And that's what they talk about the velocity factor. You still have the same number of cycles, but guess what? Now that we're going to slow it down 300 million meters per second times 0.95, which is a 5% loss or the velocity factor on a dipole wire, that new distance becomes 285 million meters per second. So what happens is instead of having a wavelength in free space of 10.56 meters, now that that RF energy is propagating down a dipole wire, that new distance now, instead of being 10.56, it's now 10.03, but we still have the same number of cycles. They're just squished together a little bit more. Instead of going 300 million meters per second, it's only going 285 million meters per second. So, but the same number of cycles. So that's why the wavelength changes. 
This is where the uh, 468 number comes from. I've showed this before, but uh, basically you take 300 million meters per second and you convert it to feet. Uh, you add the velocity factor for a dipole wire divided by two, then you end up with your uh, factor here, 468, which is a number we're all familiar with. You divide that 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz will give you the feet of the entire uh, dipole. Divide, multiply that times 12 and then divide it by two, and then you have the individual length of each dipole wire on the antenna. Here's just real quick, I think everyone may have seen this before, just straightforward math. But if you get confused, these little memory aids help me remember. And lastly, there's our finished product with the electrical wavelength of a half, of a half wave, the velocity factor. And we can now look at the, you know, the construction of the basic antenna. Uh, and this is what's cool about this. We've gone through uh, and looked at the speed of light. We looked at the frequency, the cycles. Uh, just remember, uh, wavelength is always going to be the number of cycles times the wavelength. Uh, will give you the speed of light. So hopefully this helps. This is not really directly related, but this is a concept I think everyone needs to be familiar with because in your radio career, speed of light, wavelength, velocity factor, these are all terms that you're going to come across and this video just kind of lightly touches on them and kind of gives you something to think about. So anyway, 73 from KI5JUF. Hope you enjoyed the video.